Amen. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. This is me, Apostle Esther. I pray that you are already having an amazing day. This is a day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice. Okay, let, let me try that again. We shall rejoice. Okay, I think that's a little bit better, a little bit better. Listen, it's great being with you on today. Of course, this is the day that the Lord has made. Yes, we shall rejoice and we shall be glad in it. It is indeed a choice to rejoice. I am Apostle Esther. My husband, Apostle Chris, and I are the humble servants of Kings Court Ministries. We are located at 209 North Broad Street, right here in the city of Fayetteville, North Carolina. We invite you to come over, fellowship with us, um, and experience what the Lord is doing in our kingdom. I am going to give you a moment to get your Bibles, to get your notepads, to get your iPads. Um, I know that for about the last month, we have just been reading through the book um, of Psalm, just sharing some of the passages with you. Um, and I just felt led to come back now and um, release some more content. Um, so however the Lord is leading, that's what we're doing and we're excited about it. Um, but I want to talk today from Proverbs um, chapter 25, verse um, 6 verse 6 out of the King James translation and the Bible says train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it let me read that again train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old he will not depart from it um, what is that it that the the proverbial writer is writing here the it that he's talking about is the way we train up the child, the way that he should go and he will not depart from that path, from that structure, from um, that foundation that we've placed in them. Um, this is a passage that as I was growing up, my mom used to quote this um, and declare this over our lives that um, her purpose was to train us up in the way to fear the Lord, to love the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to learn to love the Lord God that she served and you know to be born again believers and she she lived in this truth and she um she really really imparted this in, in my heart um that she was training me up in the way that she wanted me to go and I as I reflect on the things that are happening in the world and um we just as I said on one of the previous videos that we just um celebrated um, the graduation of our oldest granddaughter and just sitting there, you just have um, uh, just mixed emotions about things, about people, um, you know, and as I sat there and I began to pray this scripture over all of those graduates, so Lord, that even now that they would have an encounter with you, that they would understand that they are getting ready to make their imprint on this world in this life in society and I pray that just my prayers would cover them and that they would make the decision to serve the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob that they would make the decision to serve the God that I serve and I believe that when we are in corporate settings that it's a great time to declare to echo the word of truth over the lives um, some of them may know about God some of them may not but it's never too late to pray. It's never too late to declare the word of God. And as all, I think it, they said it was 383 of them that were graduating. I just begin to say, Lord, you know, let the word of God permeate in their heart. Let it rest in their spirit. Let, let, let there be other believers uh, there with, with, with us, uh, with Apostle Chris and I, um, believing that this group of children will be the ones that will change the world, that will change the dynamics of what's going on, um, that will make the decision that I'm not going to be destructive, but I'm going to be a person that's going to be an influencer in this world. I'm going to change the, the, the mindset. I'm going to change the behavior. And so when I look at how much and how different things are when I was in school and when I was graduating, I mean, dress codes and just just uh, the, the whole dynamics of, of how things has changed. It, it puts you in a place of prayer. Um, as I begin to sit there and I begin to observe, um, even, you know, and, and we have to, um, 
as adults, you know, we have to be the example. You know, one of the things that they were saying is that, you know, be, um, be honorable and reverence whenever they're calling out the students' names. Don't yell and scream and holler. And some of the parents did it in spite of. They knew that they were going to be escorted out of the arena, but they did it. But we have to lead by example. Um, if we want to make change, we have to be the change. And so, you know, I, I, I was very happy, you know, for our graduate, but because the honor code was there that we're, we're expecting you to honor the honor code and not um, break the rules. And some people did, and of course they were escorted out. But we have to be the example when we're saying train up a child in the way that he or she should go. And when he's old, he'll not depart from it. And so I'm thankful for the truth that my mom um, instilled in my life that, you know, she said, I want you to lo love the Lord. I want you to be saved. And, you know, and even though she said that, I had to come to the place of accountability that, you know what, mama, I want to be saved. I, w I want you to structure my life. And so many times I look back and I was thinking that mama was so hard on me, but because she had expectation of me, she molded my life. And so why am I saying this today? We have the accountability and the responsibility to train our children up. A lot of times in our ministry, when I'm dedicating babies, I tell the parents, you have the responsibility to be the example. Children are going to follow what they see in the home. You know, teachers say this, when children act out at school, then I know that they must have the same behavior at home. And so we have to be able to shape and mold and make our children, train them to make better decisions, train them to be better children so they can be better adults. But if we're allowing them to just do any kind of thing and act any kind of way, we're not leading by example. And I tell you, my mom led by example, you know, and I know we don't believe in, in discipline the way we, we grew up, but sometimes you got to spare the rod. You got to take that switch out and, you know, let them know, no, this, this is what we're going to do. This, we, 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 we're going to have some, some honor and reverence here because I'm training you up right. Now I know I'm probably going to get some, some emails on this, but you know, you train your, your child, but this is what worked for me. But we have to learn when the word of the Lord says, train up a child in the way he should go. We have to lead by example. And I want to ask, I want to pose that question to you today. How are you leading your children? What example are you setting forth in your home? What are you doing um, in your home? Um, and, and, and when your children go out, you're, you're good with them acting that way. So we have to lead by example. So I want to say, train up people of God, men, women, boys, girls, mothers, fathers, we have to lead by example. We have to be the example so that our children will want to be better adults. I believe sometimes this is why things happen in the world because we are not being the example. Now we can be the example by praying. We can be the example by reading the word of God. We can be the example by introducing them to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And not only is he the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but he's my God. It's a personal thing. You know, my mom said in this house, we're going to pray. We're going to read the word of God. And so that was the example that I tried as well to follow with my children. But I want to ask you today, what are you doing with your children, even at a very young and a very impressionable age, what is the example that you're living and leading in your home? You know, whenever our grandchildren come here, because the children are grown now, you know, they said, one thing we know, we're going to hear gospel music. We're going to hear the word of God. Um, we're going to hear, you know, somebody preaching or praying because that is the example. I believe that that is the greatest legacy and the greatest inheritance that we can leave for our children and our grandchildren is the legacy of our faith. That they can say that my granny and my granddaddy love the Lord. Um, I'm training you up. I'm, I'm living my life as an example so that you can follow that. Listen, we got to get serious about this. We are losing our children. I mean, it, it, it's just, it's just, it's just unreal. And so somebody's got to say, Hey, time out. Let's change what we're doing so that we can bring up productive, respectful adults. I mean, that's just the way it, ha that's just the way it has to be. And you know, when I was uh, coming up in school, 
we we would we would have prayer we would read the scripture um, there were times that we would have religious activities. I know that a lot of schools does not do that now, but we need prayer back where that we can make a change. We can make a difference. My day goes better with prayer. My day goes better when I spend time in the word of God. And so I wanted to share this, train up a child um, in the way they should go. Now we've learned in the, in the English um, language that when we see this train up a child, it's a command. We are commanded to train our children up right. We are commanded through the word of God to bring them up, to love the Lord, to reverence God. And I, I, I put this mandate back to mothers and fathers, sons and daughters. Come on, let's get back to where we need to be and begin to fall back in love with God and teach our children to love God. Teach them to have that reverential fear for God. Teach them that when we come to church and we even have our devices in the church, that's not the time to be on Facebook. That's not the time to be on Instagram. That's not the time to be on Twitter. But that is the time if we're reading the word to read the word of God. Give God that reverence while you're in the household of faith. Come on. You know, that's why I... I Personally, I say bring your hard copy Bible. That way, when we open up the Bible, I know that you have your Bible because there are so many devices of the enemy to rob us, to steal us right out of the household of faith. We're sitting there, you know, shouting and praising the Lord and our children are playing games. Our children are somewhere else. Listen, when we grew up in church, no, you were going to have your eyes fixed on whatever was going on at the front of that church so that you could come back home and say this, give me three points that the preacher preached on. Give me a song that the choir sang. We should not just come to church and say, well, this is, this is what's going to keep my child quiet is a gadget or a device. No, train up a child in the way they should go. And if we train them up right, they'll live right. They'll be right. But if we're always giving them a passive out, then that's what we're going to deal with. When we came to church, we didn't have snacks. We didn't have any of that stuff. And I know I'm old school. I get all of that. But when are we going to bring the standard back to the household of faith that we're going to say, no, this is the structure. This is what we're going to do. Maybe at the church, we can go in the fellowship hall. We can have snacks. We can have a refreshment. But while we're in the household of faith, we're going to be attentive. We're going to see what the spirit of the Lord is doing. And we're going to get what we're here to get. And that is wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the word of God. Just wanted to share that because we are just getting so far from the truth of God's word. I see it in, 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 in households of faith when I go out to visit or, and I see it sometimes even in our kingdom where our children are not where they need to be because they have these things that we call the devices and we figure, well, that's the way to keep them quiet. No, we have to learn to reverence and to honor the Lord. Train up a child. How do you want your child? How do you want them to be as an adult? Then you have to begin to shape and mold them. I begin to look at the different um, students that came out with all of the, 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 um, award the cords um, from all of the awards that they had achieved and, and honored uh, uh, and earned through school. That's because they applied themselves. And so when we come to the household of faith, we need to learn to apply ourselves because listen, I, I, I'm looking for great rewards from the Lord. And so I want to give him his due diligence. I want to honor him. I want to reverence him. I want to worship him. When I come to the household of faith, that's my purpose to become empowered train up a child. Some of us, even as adults, we need to be trained up as spiritual children, how to function and how to operate in the kingdom of God. I love it. One of our, um, covenant leaders was sharing that with me. She said, you know, apostle, a lot of times we think about children, but sometimes adults need to be taught how to be trained up as a child in the kingdom of God, how to work, how to function, how to flourish in the kingdom of God. Just wanted to share that with you on the day. Um, it, 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 it was good for me to just hear sharing this because we have to get back to the foundation of what God is speaking in our hearts, what he's speaking in our spirits. I want to see us prosper. I want to see our children spiritually and naturally grow up and be who God has purpose called and ordained them to be. I want you to listen to this word. If you are falling short in this, 
Come on, get yourself together and get in the place. Say, God, you know what? This was a word that I needed to get me where I need to be. I need to get my children in the household of faith, whether they're they're small children or grown children where they need to be taught kingdom principles, train up a child. We have the responsibility. We have the accountability. You already know I'm Apostle Esther, super excited about what the Lord is doing in our lives. There are areas that God is still training me up in, areas he's still growing me up in, and I want him to use me. I want him to get the glory out of my life. So I'm like, Lord, teach me your ways. Teach me, oh God, that I not walk in error, but I walk in the truth of your word. You already know, Apostle Chris and I are the humble servants, King's Court Ministries, 209 North Broad Street, Fayetteville, North Carolina. Follow us as we follow Christ. I'm simply an ambassador, always super excited about the assignment that the Lord has me on. I want to personally thank all of my new subscribers. I want to thank all of you that have shared my content. I want to thank all of you that have liked my content. And now I want to thank all of you that are beginning to comment on my content. Thank you so much. I try to go on at least once a week and try and catch up and respond to all of my comments because it really does mean a lot to me. And I appreciate you for spending the time with me as we spend this time with Christ. Have a super amazing day. You know I need to pray with you, Father. I thank you for your word on today. I thank you, Lord, as your word say, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he gets old, he will not depart from the truth of your word. So, Father, I thank you that the truth of your word is alive, it's active, it's accelerated. It's advancing us in our faith walk with you. Lord, I ask you to forgive us in those areas that we've fallen short, that we've become slack, that we've just become lackadaisical, oh God. And Father, I pray that you will put the passion of God, the love of God, the fire of God in us, that we will go forward, oh God, and we will seek you and we will, we will learn your word. We will spend time in your word. We will spend time in your presence that you can train us up, that you can shape us, that you can mold us and you can make us and cause us to be those mature saints and those mature kingdom-minded citizens, oh God. We give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor. Now, Lord, if there is a person under the sound of my voice that is not saved, I do ask that you wash them in your blood, fill them with your love, give them a heart, a mind, a will, and a desire to serve you all the days of their lives. Train them up, oh God. Shape them, mold them, and make them, and use them for your glory. Thank you, Lord, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, it is acceptable in thy sight. Lord, you are my strength and you are my redeemer. Be magnified in Jesus' matchless name. Amen and amen. Have a super day. We'll see you on the next content. God bless you.